Oddly, what we're well known for is our squeaky floors. We have these great old wood floors that make a ton of noise and our customers love it. We, uh, you know, it's a little bit lost on us why this is so wonderful because we listen to it all day long, but it, you know, it's a character, you know, we're not a super slick uh, box store kind of look, you know, and I think people, I think the squeaky floors represent that, that it's just kind of a real old, kind of store like you don't get in a lot of communities anymore. We're an independent bookstore, I've been here since 1973, and um, I've owned the store since 2006 along with my husband, Robert Casso. It was opened by Michael Katzenberg in 1973 across the street, and it's been part of the community ever since. They moved the store after a flood in 1992 when the old store got flooded. It was time to expand and start in a fresh space and they moved here so and we've been here ever since and Bear Pond Books is really a community bookstore people um, have been coming here since the beginning and our kids have grown up here and we uh, definitely like like being part of that community that way I don't think you can find too many towns of 8,000 people that support three bookstores in fact at one time we had five bookstores in downtown Montpelier all within a stone's throw of each other and you don't find that too many places anymore um, uh, you know mostly independent bookstores are closing around the country some some communities are supporting more and opening stores but a lot of them are closing after, you know, a lot of stores that have been in business for almost 40 years like us are not surviving changes of ownerships and uh, retirements and things like that but this is a community that values books, values reading. We have a lot of writers. Um, and it's also a community beyond that values independent stores. There's not a lot of big box stores and a lot of malls around here. And it really makes a huge difference. Um, if a Barnes & Noble had come into town 20 years ago, I don't know if we would still be here. But it didn't. <laughs> and, um, you know, there are certainly there were borders in Barnes and Noble in other towns nearby, but um, this community got long before the buy local and shop local movement started. Um, this community understood that if you wanted to have a bookstore in town, you had to shop at the bookstore, not um, go to Barnes and Noble and, you know, and say that you love the store, <laughs> which I think is a problem. People uh, definitely say they support their stores, but when you're we're purchasing elsewhere, you're not really supporting a store. So th I, this community just really understood that from the beginning, and we've had people people come in here all the time and say, "I looked this up, uh, this book up online, but I want to buy it from you." We hear that all day long, every day, and you know, I, I looked it up on the internet, but I'm not going to buy it there. I would never buy it there. <laughs> you know, they make sure to tell us. And uh, we appreciate that, and it's that attitude that keeps us in business, because if we didn't, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't still be here. So I'm looking more like for a resource type thing versus, but I'll take I think, yeah. Bear Pond's always been very involved in the community. We're, um, you know, from small things like we, we serve as a ticket agent for a lot of activities in town. Everything from school plays to chamber orchestra concerts, and we, we sell tickets for. Um, so we... If, We've become a supporter of the arts in, in that way, and which also brings a lot of people in to, to talk to us. And, um, but we're also you know, on local boards and, and involved with the local downtown organization, and we're involved with local schools and supporting activities they have there. So and some of it's monetary and some of it's just helping out. We are definitely reliant on our community, the, 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 the writing, the, the readers, the writers, um, the people who just support independent, book, uh, independent stores, but um, there is a great writing community in, in Vermont and in this area, and we have the Vermont College of Fine Arts right up the street that has um, writing programs for both adults and children in creative writing and um, so customers the first place they go when they come in is our bestseller table which is right up front and that's the independent booksellers in bestseller list it's just in, it's a survey of independent booksellers across the country so it's not the same as the USA Today or the New York Times although of course there's some overlap but it's what independent booksellers are selling the most of so people go straight there and to the new releases table and then they go right over to staff picks Everybody wants to see what's on staff picks. It's a, a very good writing, very powerful. It's told in the plural first person. Am I going to like person? that? Plural.
a good number of our best sellers come right off of our staff picks table and we each staff member has customers who are like oh I always read what you suggest and <laughs> so you, know, you can't recreate that um, with an algorithm online it just it's not the same thing as talking to people and having somebody say I loved it because um, you know I think you're gonna love it because of this and you, you can't you can't get that other other places the biggest challenge to owning an independent bookstore these days is definitely competition from the internet, both from online um, marketplace and the whole e-book, e-reader phenomenon that is very popular um, and definitely affects us. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of our regular customers are, as like I said, they love us, they support us, but then they're like, yeah, but I got this um, Nook and <laughs> or I got an iPad and it's so easy to get a book. And so we've definitely lost customers that way. A lot of people will buy from, will buy e-books from us through our website, which we've enabled, but not everybody does, and we, we have lost customers that way. Or we don't lose customers to ebooks so much as they don't buy as much as they used to, because I think we see a lot of the same people, but the purchases maybe aren't as high as they used to be. It, it is a constant uh, question is how are we going to survive uh, in this new environment. You know, publishing is in a precarious position in some ways, and, and a lot of bookstores are in precarious positions, and how are we going to survive that? It's something we think about all the time. There is no uh, resting on your laurels, even if you've been here almost 40 years. We are constantly trying to change and adapt and stay on top of things, uh, you know, like adding ebooks to our website, um, and, and having a website that you can order any kind of books on is all something we work on all the time you know we're on Facebook now we're bringing in we need bring in new products all the time we have more things that non book items in the store that people really enjoy for gift giving that we pay careful attention to so we we definitely have to stay on top of things and make sure we're checking what's the next next place we should be going and and not just assuming that they'll just keep coming and it is very important um, to keep the bookstores because where are you going to browse if the bookstores close? There's not going to be, uh, you know, box stores are going away to some extent, certainly for books. Um, where are you going to browse? Where are you going to get ideas? I personally do not want Amazon controlling the entire publishing industry. And without independent bookstores, that will be the powerhouse. And they're not book people. <laughs> they're internet people. And I don't think we want them making the decisions on what gets uh, what gets published and what gets out to the what gets advertised, what gets out to the people, um, and I see that as a really big threat. If you really want an independent bookstore in your community, you have to go and shop at the independent bookstore in your community. Uh, it might, might not stay there forever while you're shopping online or doing something <laughs> you might find convenient. You know, you can, you can go online and have an algorithm tell you what to read next, but that is not compared to going into a store, browsing, finding something unexpected, uh, finding something new by a favorite author that you didn't know about, coming into a store that feels natural and or just kind of grew organically and you know has a real personal feel of the people who work here.